Hi, welcome to Alabama Farm. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Bruce. And uh, we do interesting things around the farm, a lot of different things. And so I just thought that some of the projects that I'm currently involved with, I'd uh, share with other people that have farms and are just interested in that kind of thing. And uh, today, we're getting to one of the favorite things that I've been really wanting to get a hold of, which is uh, we're going to take a look at the inside of the 1965 Ford F-350 engine. One of the problems that we had was that when I went to turn the engine itself, it would not move. And so we figured it might be seized up for whatever reason. And so we took it out of the, uh, the truck completely and put it on a truck stand. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take the pan off. Actually, I cheated uh, yesterday when I uh, went to drain the oil out of it. I started draining the oil and stopped immediately because it was water. And I actually filled up a gallon of um, water coming out of the engine. So I figured uh, this is not going to be great. So I went ahead and removed the cover yesterday and took a look and then I put the cover right back. So, uh, I didn't do anything other than take the cover off, so you guys are going to see what I saw yesterday, and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, at the end of the video, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, if you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button, because whenever new videos come out, then you'll get an alert to say, hey, Bruce is doing something different. So, enjoy, and thanks for watching Alabama Farm. Okay, so, I've already loosened all the bolts on the pan. And I'm gonna get ready to push this off. When I do, that's obviously there's a lot of junk in there, sort of like this. And my first thought was, well, you know, I can turn this upside down, take the power wash, and just wash it all out. Who's gonna know? Just maybe me and all my viewers. And that's not a responsible thing that farm people do. So I've got a garbage bag and I've got paper towels. And the reason I'm wearing the gloves today is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop the old oil out and take all that oil out before I actually do anything else to it. So we're going to clean this up. Anyway, uh, ick. So, here's the first picture of this guy. And, yes, it's as ugly as it looks so this is what's going to go in the garbage and be properly disposed of as you can see that's the oil pump
So as you can see, I got a lot of the muck out, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to clean this out. And then once all of this is cleaned out, I'm gonna put some carburetor cleaner in and get it, get it to the point to see what I have to work with. And at that point, we're gonna start going into the engine and take these pieces out and clean them up, of course. One of the important things is, once this is all cleaned up and with carburetor cleaner, the bare metal will be exposed to the air. So one of the tricks that I found on the internet was if you spray WD-40 on it, it prevents that extra rust buildup or the rust from happening until the point where I can actually get to it where I can go ahead and uh, sandblast to clean and then of course at that point I'll coat it with oil so it doesn't rust. And I want to get all the rust out of here because I don't want that rust circulating in the engine. And so now before I press the button on my camera, <laughs> I'm going to clean these gloves off because gloves are nice, but they're better to put off and on. So I'm just going to press the button with the glove. And before I do, let me give you a closer up look of what's in that engine. So all of this really has to be cleaned before we start taking pieces out of it, but I have a sneaking suspicion the reason it didn't work at all is because of all the water in the engine. Okay, so what I did was I removed the cap from one of these guys. The nice thing is the, the uh, bearing itself and the crankshaft look really good. And what I did was I tried to knock one of these pistons out, no luck. So then what we're doing is we're gonna take the bearings off and then we're gonna pull the crankshaft. And that way, when we turn it over, we'll be able to knock the pistons out because they seem to be frozen pretty good. So again, the, the the next part here is to take all the caps off, we're going to take the front pulley off and disconnect the timing chain and see if we can't go ahead and pull the crankshaft off. Okay, so where are we? So we managed to take off the uh, main bearings. These things hold the crankshaft together. We were able to get the number five and the number four piston to actually move but what we need to do really is to pull this whole crankshaft off and we need to disengage it from the cam that's what this timing chain does and hopefully when the cam comes out we'll be able to rotate this a little bit maybe enough to get a couple of pistons out maybe enough to turn the crankshaft over so my hope is when i take this big bolt off and the pulley off that we might be able to uh, progress a little further. But I didn't think it was going to be all that interesting for you to watch me just unscrew some bolts and pull some caps off. So that's, plus it's, a, as you can see, it's a messy job and no point in seeing all the dirt. Okay, so we're going to stop for today. First thing is, clean this up okay for a start. And then when I figured I've got a big tub of, uh, that I could put gasoline in and just let it soak in that. So I'm gonna do that out in the open, of course. And I got a lot further than I really thought I was going to get, so I'm really, really happy with this. What happened was that we managed to go ahead and take all the bearings off, okay? And all this stuff that you see in here is a piece of oak that I tried to drive some of the pistons out. And with great luck, there's the number seven piston. Now, I didn't think I was gonna be able to get a piston out, but so taking the cover off, getting to this point, I'm way ahead of what I wanted to do today. So I'm gonna call it quits. I'm gonna clean that piston up. And uh, the problem I have, okay, of course, I'm gonna work on this oil pump. Problem I have is this little bugger here, he's not moving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a bigger 
uh, air wrench and see if I can't go ahead and break him free. But I'm also going to get a, uh, a torch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up around here. So it expands that and then maybe I'll be able to break that guy free. Once I break that free, uh, this front cover here, I think, comes off. I'm going to have to check the book on that. But if he comes off, that'll be a nice thing to have. So it looks like it does. I'm not sure, but we'll see when we go ahead and get the book. That's why I have the book. Somebody's smart enough to write about all this stuff. I'm smart enough to read it. Anyway, so, okay. So I had a wee, real, real, well of time getting this piston out. And uh, I knew that there was a certain point where this one's going to have to be replaced. So the number eight system, the piston is AOS SOL. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this nut here, pull the timing chain, and see if, miracle by miracle, we can turn the crank a little bit. If we can, we can get the rest of the pistons out. So that's what I'm hoping to do next. Oh, that was a little too easy. Yeah, I'm worried. Okay, let's see. Keeper, I need to take off. Ugh. Okay, so I got the first keeper off right here. Timing chain off, and I'm going to take this keeper off so that I know where it's at. Obviously, a lot easier said than done. It only happens when the video's on. First one came off like there was nothing. Okay. The fastest way to do this is turn off the video and then I'll get it. <sighs> Okay, so another piston is ready to fall, and I got too much stuff in the workplace, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. But here we go. There's another piston. We're going to try for number two, but I'm going to clean up this 
a little bit so I'm not tripping over uh, tools that's not safe. Okay, so the good news, at least for me, is that the crankshaft finally turned, so it freed up some of these pistons. So hopefully if I can get the rest of these pistons out, then the crankshaft should have a shot of coming out. Of course, I'm going to need the gray lift for that and probably pop something you don't want to take on by yourself. guys ready to come out. I think I'm going to be able to catch them. Let's see. Nice. This is the easiest one so far. And yeah, let me mark this. This and down that was. <sighs> number eight is shot. Number seven is at the shop. Six and five are here. Four, three, two, and one. So that was number three. So we gotta mark that down. Ick. Yeah, that's a. Technical automotive term, ick. Right. Okay, so another piston is ready to fall, and I got too much stuff in the workplace, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. But up this a little bit so I'm not tripping over uh, tools that's not safe. Okay, so here comes the number one. and turn this guy again. 